Earlier this year, the long-awaited Bill C-92 received royal assent and is now law. And for those who work with kids in care, it's a really big deal. Why? Well, here are six things you need to know about Bill C-92. Number one, things needed to change. It is no mystery Indigenous children across our country deserve better care. Despite Indigenous children only making up 7% of the children in our country, more than half of all children in care are Indigenous. There are more kids in care now than were in residential school. So what does this all mean? Well, our outcomes are bleak. We're less likely to graduate, more likely to commit suicide, more likely to go to prison, more likely to become addicted to alcohol or drugs, more likely to be abused, more likely to die. The list goes on and on. Right now, apprehension often sees Indigenous children being taken from their families and from their communities. This bill will lead to a new process which aims to keep children and youth in their communities and will give power to First Nations, Métis and Inuit governments. Number two, for the first time, the bill clearly identifies what are the best interests of the Indigenous child. We know that apprehension is traumatizing. So what does the bill mean when it talks about the best interests of an Indigenous child? It includes the child's physical, emotional and psychological safety, security and well-being, the child's cultural and spiritual upbringing, the emotional ties of the child, the child's views and preferences, the child's needs and level of development. It is on this basis that will determine the kind of care a child will receive in any event. Number three, Bill C-92 will aim to keep Indigenous children and families together. What does that mean? Well, here's an example. Little Billy is taken. We first look at the possibility of Billy going to one of his parents. If that is not an option, then someone in Billy's family, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a great uncle, a cousin. But if that is not in the best interest of the child, then we try to get Billy back into his own nation, his community, amongst his people. Barring all that though, if necessary, then at least to an adult that at least belongs to an indigenous community. But there's more. The bill would keep siblings together when it is in their best interest. Number four, we now have the jurisdiction, power to make decisions when it comes to our children and families. When the Indian Act was first developed, it was for Indians and lands for Indians. It did not mention at all children and families. So over time, that fell to the provinces to deal with. We know we have the inherent right for self-governing. This bill affirms that right when it comes to child welfare. It also allows us to develop our own act, our own jurisdiction over those services. But there is a catch. It is shared power with the province and government of Canada with some overriding power in our favor. Here's how it could work. First, we'd have to give notice of intent to exercise jurisdiction. Then we'd negotiate with the federal and provincial governments. But what happens if we can't come to an agreement? Well, no worries. If reasonable efforts were made, then in 12 months, we would have force of law as federal law. Number five. Okay, that sounds good, but one big thing is missing. Where is the money? Carrie Sakani Family Services CEO Warner Adams states, it took us 30 years for government to realize the child services system did not work. Bill C-92 provides us space to develop a truly effective wellness model. Mary T.G. agrees. She says we need money to breathe life into jurisdiction. And although the bill would take us big strides forward, nowhere does the bill address where resources would come from to implement our own child welfare systems. The Indigenous Services Minister is on record saying that funding was something that could be worked out as agreements were made. But as Cindy Blackstock has said, without guaranteed funding, linking funding to agreements could lead to some communities getting better deals than others. So this will be something to watch in the future. Number six, Carrier Sakani's role. Carrier Sakani is leading the charge when it comes to a new model of jurisdiction. We've already done research on our own practices. We've developed a family law model. We've developed a model of prevention. So we are ready for it. Carrier Sakani would need to engage with our communities first and how we would move forward. But the expectation is a draft act would be ready within three years. There is more to come on this series. In the meantime, for more information about Bill C-92 and other initiatives, go to the following links. 
Also, stay tuned to Carrie Sakani Family Services Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to our website at csfs.org.